Kansas State. The Wildcats just got better over the weekend, adding Colorado transfer running back Dylan Edwards. Edwards led the Buffs in rushing as a true freshman last season and has a lot of football left in him. Let's welcome in 24-7 Sports National College football reporter Matt Zenitz to get us the latest on all things Transfer Portal. And Matt, let's start right there. Dylan Edwards to Kansas State. How did it all go down? So first of all, just to backtrack and uh, look, look at, I guess, the falling out with Colorado. So everyone obviously remembers the, the big first game for, for Dylan and Colorado last season. And, and Dylan put off four touchdowns in that, in that big win over TCU. And then progressively during the course of the year, production fell off. Colorado deemed it a priority to add to it during the course of this spring portal cycle that didn't go unnoticed with Dylan. And after Colorado added a different running back, Dallin Hayden, all of a sudden there were progressive rumblings in terms of the possibility of Dylan going into the portal. He ends up making that move. He, he's somebody from the, the state of Kansas, as it was put to me by a Kansas State source in the last couple of days, he had visited with them a million times, seemingly a million times leading up to this most recent visit. But on this one, it seemed like he was taking their presentations even more seriously and paying uh, even more attention than he had in the past. And ultimately, within 24 hours, was locked in to, to Kansas State and now set to be a part of an offense for moving forward that has him there with a, a high upside young quarterback in Avery Johnson. And then DJ Giddens coming back at the running back position also, who's coming off a 1,200-yard season. Not too shabby. That's a pretty good backfield for those Wildcats. And uh, at one point, Edwards was committed to Kansas State during his recruitment. So uh, there is that connection there. For the record, Kansas State plays at Colorado on October 12th. So go ahead, mark your calendar <laughs> calendars now. That's going to be a fun little, uh, little rematch there. Um, just looking in total, there's so many players that have hit the portal, especially during this spring window. And there's still so many uncommitted prospects, although the portal window closes tomorrow. There's still more recruitments that can happen after that, so that means that no more players can go in, but you're still tracking those recruitments. So who are some uncommitted prospects that you're still monitoring now? Yes, I guess we can start with, with the number one available prospect for us, J Jason Zandamella, who is actually a true freshman. He was in the, the 2024 recruiting class and uh, had signed with USC, went into the portal, and it became clear very quickly that it wanted to get back closer to home. He's from the, the state of Florida, and right now it's a, a UCF-Florida battle with Florida progressively on my end during the course of the last few days becoming the, I guess you could say, clear favorite at this point, even though UCF by no means do they feel like they're out of it right now. I would say another one to, to go along with that that a lot of teams around the country are monitoring is Takario Davis at at Arizona, a, a corner who's been in the, the portal for a while at this point. A Arizona, and this is a conversation that I had as recently as today, a Arizona is still optimistic about keeping it, keeping him, even though he has not told them 100% what he's doing, but hopeful that they're going to be able to get him to withdraw from the portal a at some point in the, the next couple of days. And then I guess uh, I'll end on Derek Harmon, who is the, the top defensive lineman in the transfer portal at this point. Uh, Derek was a big-time player for Michigan State and has been very popular um, let's say since entering the, the portal, just like he was when he, wait, when he went in during the winter cycle before ultimately returning to Michigan State. The, the teams coming up most on my end right now one, USC. USC hosted him for a, a visit going back to the end of last week, and he also visited Colorado over the weekend. That There are some some schools involved and that have interest in him. They feel like Ohio State may be lurking there kind of quietly, but, but don't have anything definitive on that yet on my end. But hey, I've been set to, to visit Miami the, the early part of this week. That visit is no longer happening, and there are some other schools that Hey, have had interests like Florida State, LSU, that were hoping to get visits locked in that have been unsuccessful doing that thus far. Once again, those uncommitted prospects have time till they 
have to commit, but for people entering the portal, that window officially closes tomorrow, Tuesday at midnight. But I like that you and Chris Hummer clarified in a report that for grad transfers, they have one additional day and we could see some stragglers as compliance works with the paperwork and everything. But in terms of last minute entrance, are there some names that we should keep an eye out for? Well, the, the, the biggest thing I would say is just wait, wait, what you just t touched on. You gave me a nice segue there, so I appreciate <laughs> that. So, so it, it's important to keep in mind that even though the, the portal technically closes tomorrow, um, for, first of all, compliance offices have 48 hours to actually process entry. So we're still going to be seeing players hitting the portal as far as undergraduates through Thursday. But, but then Chris and I also learned today that the NCAA has, has something that they put into effect for graduate transfers that after initially presenting things like graduate transfers would be on the same timeline and that they would have the same deadline as undergrads, that, that actually they have one extra day to, to make a decision. So graduate transfers have until the end of the day Wednesday to submit their paperwork to compliance and then compliance again has the 48 hours to process entries so with grad transfer specifically we, we could still see some of those guys entering the portal hitting the portal as late as friday if it sounds confusing it's because it is <laughs> that's why we have you on the show to talk about it and that's why uh, you are a must follow this time of year and really throughout the year with all the breaking news uh, along those lines you follow literally all of it and it's very impressive to see all the updates so just looking at this portal window as a whole i'm curious from your perspective i'm going to put you on the spot here which team do you think did the best job of taking advantage of this spring portal window i have recency bias a little bit so i'll go with miami okay. so so miami has definitely uh, been hot the, the last few days and obviously have the, the rundown there just in the, the, the last couple of days alone at one of, one of the top running backs in the country and Damian Martinez, a, a two-time All-Pac-12 se selection, at Sam Brown, arguably the, the top wide receiver to go into the portal this cycle, at a starting linebacker from Louisville, Jalen Alderman, who reconnects now, reunites with, with his former linebacker coach, Derek Nicholson, a, and then also to, to go along with those three, bring in an under-the-radar cornerback from Marshall, Deani Hill, who even though the majority of the country probably has no idea who Deani is, and I won't hold, or uh, we will not hold that against you if you, if the name doesn't immediately ring a bell, but, but I will say with Deani, they talented enough that, that he was getting interest from several Power Four teams to go along with Miami, including at least one that, that comes to mind in the SEC, so a, a sleeper, nice, under-the-radar pickup for them to go along with the aforementioned three. And the, the word that I've gotten out of the Miami camp is that from a portal standpoint, they very well may not be done yet. Hey, look at this spring portal window as a place to add depth, not necessarily starters, but looking at that list of the Miami transfer pickups, they added starters during this portal window. Matt, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. We are going to officially tie a bow on the transfer portal and this cycle tomorrow right here on the 24-7 Sports YouTube page at 5 Eastern for Transfer Portal Tracker. We will recap the biggest storylines with our insiders. One last call today, though, to make sure you hit the like button on the way out and that you are subscribed so you don't miss a moment. Thanks for watching.